Alright, so Catalina, as you know, my name's James Himes. I work for the Korean Observer. And basically, I'll be asking you a few questions. There are a lot of people who, who ask me, why do you love Korea that much? <laughs> and um, I guess I'm a fanatic, just because I never felt like I felt in Korea and like anywhere in the world, not even in my, my country. So maybe that's why I'm a fanatic. <laughs> I was a princess there. I was treated like a princess, honestly. So why shouldn't I love it, right? <laughs> I felt amazing. Actually, to be honest, I felt like a princess. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I, well, at first, I remember that like for maybe a week, I was crying out of happiness. Crying, like I do right now. <laughs> Yeah, um, I felt really, really good. And actually, it felt like I'm home there. I really felt like I'm home there. So, and I just, I think that I found my place. But the thing is that if I'm not going to find another place better than Korea, because I've been to Spain and everybody's dream is Spain, and I hate it. Like, no way. You cannot compare Spain with Korea. Like, for me, Spain is Mia. So, yeah, and if I, I cannot find another place better than Korea, and also if I can't find a, like a proper job there, I'm just going to marry the first Korean that I'm seeing, honestly, just to get the visa. Uh, no, because I was like, everybody was telling that to me, you know, that's your only chance, just to marry a Korean. And yeah, I realized it in the end. I mean, I was stubborn, and I was like, no, 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 there must be a way, but yeah, in the end I realized that that's my only chance. There is where I want to live, and there is where I feel the best. <laughs> I really love Korea, and I'm not, I'm, I stopped to, um, looking or like searching for jobs in Korea because it, it um, gives, like, it puts me into a depression all the time, so I'm just starting to cry and feel hopeless. Have you met anyone else who is as in love with Korea as you? Not as me. <laughs> I've met Koreans and actually I don't know if you know about Couchsurfing, because to be honest that's what I did for nine months there. But. Um, uh, I have uh, references from them saying that she loves my country more than I do. <laughs> so I can say, yeah, I love Korea more than Koreans, probably. <laughs> Even now, you know, I'm hosting people here and they say something about Korea. Like, she told me about Korea and now I want to visit Korea because of her or something like that. So. <laughs> I want everybody to know, everybody there to know that I love their country. <laughs> I guess in my heart, <laughs> Korea is number one. I actually went there because I won a contest. It, uh, yeah, it was a Facebook contest of, uh, on the page Seoul uh, Korea's page. How did you win that trip to Korea? I was supposed to write a small essay about what the soul means to me and uh, then I was supposed to raise as much likes as I can. At, at first uh, I thought that I wasn't going to win it because well, there were people who kind of cheated, they didn't respect the rules but they had more likes than I had so I was like uh, pretty, I don't know, sad for one week. Then I realized, I mean, I found out that I was the winner, and of course, it was the happiest day of my life. And I was just like, yeah, um, jumping actually, really jumping <laughs> out of happiness. Yeah, like, because yeah. I knew I knew that I was going to go there. No, I like, really jumping, like jumping, jumping, like crazy jumping. <laughs> prize was supposed to be only for uh, five days. So I asked them to uh, put the date of my return home on, after three months because I actually wanted to find a job and stay there. 
to be honest, I never thought that I w couldn't do it. I never, it, it never came through my mind that actually there is the visa problem, which is like really big. So, um, after three months, well, of course, first month was, you know, to get used to the place. <laughs> Then I started looking for jobs and I realized that I couldn't. But after three months, I decided that uh, still I have to give myself another chance. Maybe I didn't try enough. So I went to Japan, came back, and I was there for another three months where I just didn't have any more money. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, so I couldn't stay more. So then I left home. Um, in Romania, I was, I don't know, I, I was like sick for Korea or like after it, I don't know how to say it. I was like uh, dreaming and yeah, crying and depressed and ah. So then I just um, I got some money from friends and I said I have to go back to Korea. <laughs> So I went back for three months, but yeah, after those three months again, I realized that, I, then I actually really realized that I am not prepared for it and I can't make it like this. Uh, the problem was the visa status. Whenever the, um, I was going to interviews or I was asking people who knew people, uh, the visa was a problem. To answer the question, what is that I like so much? Uh, I guess uh, the food is the first one. And for me, it's the best food in the world, honestly. I absolutely adore it. I'm like dreaming about it at night. <laughs> um, then I guess the people that are really, really nice. And I have lots of friends there and they're just amazing. My Korean family who just adopt me just like that. And I was, I don't know, I was there for one month living with them. And of course, I had food and whatever. And now we're, we are actually yeah, a family. I must say that I really, really miss them. And they also miss me and we talk and yeah, they tell me, they ask me when I'm going back and things like that. <laughs> In Korea, I can just uh, be myself. I don't know, I guess I like the egg yolk that they're doing or whatever that is. The egg yolk? Doing so. Egg yolk, point point, you know? Korean <laughs> egg yolk? Is that when you do like, oh, oh, bah, things like that. Of course, I'm ugly whenever I'm trying because, you know, Koreans are so pretty. But uh, I don't know. I just like that cuteness. <laughs> I also like um, the way they mix together the uh, old and sacred with, you know, new and technology. I don't know. I'm just amazed by that. I was once in the, um, the one of the city halls um, buildings, and I was just I, I was like in the thirteenth floor, I guess, and I saw um, Changdo. No, which one is that? Doksugung, I think. Doksugung Palace, and it was like really really nice, just the way it was. Also, because it's so safe, that country is really really safe. I don't know the people. The people are amazing. Like I can I can tell about so many great things that happened there like people just see me on the street asking where I, when I'm from where I'm from of course that was the first question and then just asking me if you have uh, if I had the dinner or not so they would just buy me food and you know stuff like that. so I was in Cognac I was alone and I just said that I should you know um, take a walk and then this uh, couple that were like maybe in their 60s, they saw me. Their English wasn't very good, but they had no problem, you know, in approaching me and uh, asking me where I'm from. And after that, they just asked me if I had dinner. I said no. Then they asked me to go for a coffee, but they bought me dinner as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, and then they, they said, well, I, I become friends with their daughter who's... Um, Actually, that was the, the reason. They told me that when we saw you, we thought about our daughter who is traveling now in Argentina. So I became friends with her on, on Facebook. And then, um, then they told me that, you know, we have to go. But if you need anything, like anything at all, just uh, tell our daughter and we are going to help you. 
Well, that's only one of the reasons, like only one of the stories, let's say. I love Makoli <laughs> as well. So we were in a, in a bar somewhere and uh, I experienced the live octopus for the first time where I actually had to eat a piece of it. Yeah, and uh, well, since I like, I was surprised when the waiter came with it, and I didn't have time to actually like film it from the beginning. So I saw that there was another one going to another table, and I just went there and filmed it, you know. But those guys were kind of like impressed or something like that. I was in tune with them. So then they they started well, of course it's like you know. Um, drunk men do I guess but at some point the <laughs> the waiter came and, and told us that we can order whatever from the menu food because they paid for it <laughs> they it paid nice, for you your know? dinner yeah, yeah, yeah. wow yeah <laughs> And people would see me on the street and they would say, I'm studying English too, I'm really studying English now. Or they wanted to, to meet me because they wanted to practice their English. And they were really happy whenever I was saying something in Korean. <laughs> I have a lot of stories like this. Anyways, people are amazing, are amazing in Korea. <laughs> but it was only one thing that I didn't like. And... Um, that was uh, whenever I was uh, having a date or something like that. <laughs> when guys, they just think that the foreign girls, or I don't know, Westerners, like they, they call them, are easy. So they're not treating us the same way they are treating uh, the Koreans. But it wasn't like all the time. It was just some times <laughs> with uh, some people. So you're about to start a well-paid job in Europe okay. next week, if you were offered a job yes. and a visa in South Korea, what would you do? Of course I would go to Korea. What question is that? <laughs> yeah, of course Korea. Like job and visa, it would be amazing. I went to Korea at first, or when I was thinking about going to Korea and get a job there, I said, oh, I have an MBA, I should definitely, most probably get a job, like immediately, you know? So I guess I was too confident, but I didn't know about the visa problems. Oh, my recruiter, or I don't know exactly what it was. It was a bit weird. I actually worked for three days. <laughs> oh, wow. Illegally. <laughs> yes. Yes, I worked for three days in a kindergarten in Seoul. Um, and uh, actually my job wasn't... Uh, I wasn't an English teacher, but I was a... Um, actress or something that I was acting there. I was an English t teacher from uh, from California, they say. And my name, Kat, wasn't American enough, so they chose Kate. Oh, wow. To okay. be more yes. They said, no, you say that your name is Kate. So I was there just because that kindergarten had some event with the parents, I guess, and they the parents needed to see some... Um, foreign English teacher or something like that. They paid me very low, but that recruiter who got me the job, he was very weird. <laughs> like, really weird. Which recruiter yeah. was it? Uh, well, he calls himself uh, Dr. Mac or something like that. Oh, no, Professor Mac. Professor Mac. So, he said that, yeah, I'm beautiful enough, so just... <laughs> like, I was beautiful enough, I just didn't have the, the visa. But yeah, that's uh, everybody, that's that's the first thing they ask, it's uh, the visa status. You've kind of answered this question already, and the question was, would you marry a South Korean man for a visa? If I see that, that there is actually nothing, nothing at all that I can do, and also that Korea, like I've seen the world and I realize that Korea is the place to be for me. Yes, I would do it. So you really love Korea, basically. That's what it comes down to, doesn't it? I really love it. I really do.